Some reporting over the weekend that President Trump t plans to take a page out of the Pete Buttigieg playbook and declare victory early. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's ahead. I'm laughing. It's not really that funny, but here we are. Um, so this is according to Axios. I think CNN also had this report. Uh, President Trump, I'm reading from this, the Axios piece now, has told confidence he'll de confidants he'll declare victory on Tuesday night. If it looks like he's ahead, that's according to three sources familiar with his private comments. That's even if the Electoral College outcome still ho hinges on large numbers of uncounted votes in key states like Pennsylvania. He got asked about this directly, and he's first he's like, no, no, no. But then he goes on to say, we're going to bring in the lawyers, and I think this and that is very unfair, and name check several states that are run by Democrats. Like, let's take a listen to what he says. The night of, as soon as that election's over, we're going in with our lawyers. But we don't want to have Pennsylvania, where you have a political governor, a very partisan guy, and we don't want to have other states like Nevada, where you have the head of the... the Democratic clubhouse as your governor. We don't want to be in a position where he's allowed to every day watch ballots come in. Gee, if we could only find 10,000 more ballots, because we're doing great in Nevada, we're doing great in Arizona, we're doing great all over. But if you take Nevada or Pennsylvania, and everyone knows what happens in Philadelphia, you, can, you don't have to say it, but I've read about it for years. And I don't think it's fair that we have to wait a long period of time after the election. If people wanted to get their ballots in, they should have gotten their ballots in long before that, a long time. Well, so just to lay out the facts, I mean, obviously, in every election, there are ballots that are counted after Election Day, frequently from military yes, service military. members who are overseas. So there's nothing unusual about that. Of course, what is unusual is the just mass volume of mail-in ballots due to the pandemic. And as we all know, those are disproportionately Democratic because Republicans have encouraged their people to vote on the day of. Um, I will note it's not a great sign of confidence when you have the president, and also we're going to play one of his advisors, basically coming up with ways to keep from counting all the ballots. Not a great sign of confidence. And also I would say part of the problem here, too, in Pennsylvania in particular, is that um, the mail has not been on time. In a lot of jurisdictions, the mail is delayed due to cost cutbacks. We've covered that here extensively as well. So um, look, if it's close, then all of this becomes extremely relevant and extremely fraught because you have that potential dynamic of the red mirage where it could look like President Trump is up in industrial Midwestern states, Pennsylvania in particular. And then as the mail-in ballots come in, it starts to shift. Are his supporters going to believe that that's legitimate or not? That's where this all gets very tense and very fraught. Yeah, absolutely. And so just to remember, recall in the article about Axios, it's he's saying, or what they said is, is that he if only he will declare the victory, so to speak, if he has commanding leads in Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Iowa, Arizona, and Georgia. That is actually, you know, if, if he does have a commanding lead in those states, because actually, as I understand it, none of those have a prolonged period of mailing ballot counting. Yeah. So it would mean actually that the votes were closed, the polls were off. That would mean it's going to be close. I've always thought if it's close and it's protracted, it's going to be a legal nightmare no matter which way it goes. Because that's when people start challenging ballots around, you know, the naked envelope thing. Yeah. How many percentage of the naked envelopes? Then in terms of the signatures, signatures not matching, you'll have uh, dual poll watchers, so to speak, at both where everybody can challenge and there's judges. This is what happened in Florida. It could even lead to a recount if things go, go wrong or are very close in a state like Pennsylvania and elsewhere. And recounts take so long. Then you've got the, you know, the Supreme Court. You never know how they're going to rule in all of this. We saw that back in 2000. So the, I think the election results, if they're close, were always going to be fraught. Obviously, Trump's, you know, it doesn't help. But I was thinking and I was looking at some analysis on this, which is that I don't think there's a reason to freak out. And I say this as somebody like, I, you know, like I'm on the right, but I'm saying if you're on the left and you're legitimately afraid, I saw somebody analogizing it to whenever he's like, we're going to have a vaccine like in a week, everybody just know they're like, okay, you know, I mean, and so the real question is, is that he says things all the time, which are yeah. outlandish and ridiculous. Now, look, we have norms in this country for a reason, and I think you should generally stick to them. But in general, his norm-breaking behavior in most cases has not led to the worst possible result. That doesn't mean it could, um, but 
I just don't think there's a reason yet to panic, so to speak, because if it is close, it was always going to be adjudicated in all so, this. And this is what the Bush and the Gore people did back into. I mean, they did. Yeah, they well, basically, that was a disaster too. They basically <laughs> did this. It, this is the thing about Trump. He just takes everything and turns it up to 11. Yeah. Like, the Bush people did the same thing. The Gore people did the same thing. They were all posturing in the media and all that. And it was a nightmare. Don't get me wrong. But if it was going to be close, it was always going to be a nightmare. So... The specifics yeah. on Pennsylvania, because I think this is really, look, if Trump has won all those states, if you won, won Florida and Georgia and Arizona and North Carolina, we know that more or less election day, and it looks like it's coming down to the state of Pennsylvania. That's when this becomes highly relevant. Biden holds about a five-point edge. Right now, are the polls dramatically off? Or can you constrain the counting enough <laughs> to make the polls dramatically off? And there's a very specific question in the state of Pennsylvania. In addition to the naked ballots and how those all get counted, et cetera, Pennsylvania allows ballots that are received from the third through the sixth to still be counted. And then after that, that's when they cut it off. Um, President Trump and some of his allies seem to want to try to challenge that idea that mail-in ballots, which were sent and postmarked at the appropriate time, that are received during that period should be illegitimate. And if it's close, that could be quite significant. And that's where, you know, the lawyers and the challenges could all come into play. Um, you saw one of President Trump's top advisors, Jason Miller, being a little too, you know, upfront about the way that they're looking at, uh, at all of this on the Sunday shows this weekend. Let's take a listen to him. If you speak with many smart Democrats, they believe that President Trump will be ahead on election night, probably getting 280 electoral, somewhere in that range. And then they're going to try to steal it back after the election. <laughs> all right. So works, counting please. ballots is not stealing an election, yeah. okay? That's making sure that everyone's voice and vote yeah. is ultimately heard. Also, because um, of the law, they literally can't be counted until election day. Right. So it in, takes several days to count. Like, exactly. In Pennsylvania yeah. and various other states, Wisconsin being one, and others that we've covered here, you literally cannot count them until election day, and that just takes some time. It's not cheating. It's not foul <laughs> play. It's not any of that. I don't worry, as we've talked about here before, I don't worry about President Trump actually like having some elaborate coup with the military involved and some of the wilder scenarios that are put out there. But this kind of rhetoric from him and Jason Miller, et cetera, and convincing, I mean, a lot of voters who live in areas because we are so ideologically like segregated in this country now, live in neighborhoods where everybody they know is a Trump supporter, yeah. and they literally can't imagine Joe Biden and Kamala Harris winning by a legitimate means. And look, there are people on the left that feel that way as well. But when you have the president going out and saying this is illegitimate, and we already, I mean, look at the news over the weekend, we already have this incredibly fraught, charged political environment. That's the piece that I worry about. The country already on edge and in a really weird time with people still locked down from COVID and economic anxiety, all of those things coming together. That's the piece that I'm nervous about. Not that he's going to do anything beyond, you know, I mean, he'll try to make as much trouble as he can and legal challenges, et cetera. But that's the part I'm nervous about. No, I think he should be. And there's always potential. I just, based upon like how I've seen it, I don't think we're there yet. And look, if we, if it, things change, we'll talk about it here. Uh, I get, you know, one of the things I'm actually really hoping for is a landslide in either direction. I just, just hope so it's you clear. It out. Yeah. yeah, I just so want it like, to be totally if he clear. Wins, great. <laughs> I just want to know, like on election night. And same thing uh, on Biden. It would just be much easier that way. But honestly, I It'll don't. Be think easier so. on the country that yeah. way. All right, we're rising for you after this.